everybody. I am UFO Jane, and this is Keeping It Weird, episode five. Thank you so much for joining me today, especially during these uncertain times. If you are stuck at home, yeah. like so many in the world are right now, then why not kill some time going down the rabbit hole and reading some top secret CIA files? That's what I've been doing. And so I have collected, I have hand selected for you some of my very favorite files from one of my very favorite top secret projects, the Stargate project. Don't worry, we're not going to get all dark and MK Ultra on you for this video. We're going to keep it pretty light. <sighs> But before we get into all that, please remember to like, subscribe, comment, turn on notifications so you can know when episode six comes out. And then I've also got some great interviews in the works, uh, so stay tuned. If you don't know already, the Stargate Project is the code name given to a top secret government program that investigated and sought to, well, militarize the psychic phenomenon. But before it was called Stargate, it was called many other code names, including Sunstreak, Grill Flame, Gondola Wish, Pepper Dragon. Okay, I made up that last one, but would you ever know, like, how do they come up with these names? Is it like Mad Libs? More specifically, the CIA and the DIA, that's the Defense Intelligence Agency, and a contractor called SRI International, a lot of acronyms to keep up with, dealt with the use of psychoenergetics. Impress your friends with that one on your next uh, Zoom gathering. Um, so they dealt with psychoenergetics in the collection of intelligence information. Psychoenergetics uh, was divided into two categories, mental effects on the physical world and purely mental collection of information. So we're gonna go over the number two category. This is especially relevant to the UFO community because one of the people who conducted these experiments was none other than physicist Hal Puthoff. So he helped co-found To The Stars Academy with Tom DeLonge and has been pretty instrumental in getting UFO files released and making disclosure happen. There are some other familiar names that were involved with this project, like Yuri Geller, Yep, that's the spoon bending guy. So how it worked is they would typically give a remote viewer or psychic a target hidden away in an envelope or sometimes just geo coordinates or a time and place or both. Then these remote viewers would basically spy on this target in seemingly real time. The target would sometimes be a foreign enemy. So maybe the goal was to locate hostages in Iran. But for the most part, this was a training program. So it was more of a proof of concept. Here are some of the remote viewing examples just to start out with. In these examples, the target was a drawing. And as you can see, the different remote viewers all guessed the drawings pretty accurately. The only one that is a little off is the devil. And it appears that all the remote viewers, including Yuri Geller, drew the planet Earth. Creepy and kind of explains 2020. Of the hundreds of files that I sifted through, there were eight in particular that I found super intriguing, and they're right here on my desk. Um, JK, I found them on CIA.gov. The links are in the description, and you can check them out yourself. All right, so we're going to count down from like weird to really weird files. So for this first file, the mission was to determine key activity related to April 4th, 1987. So they were pretty curious about that date for some reason. And here's what the remote viewer had to say. So something of a scientific, political, and even educational nature is associated with the target activity. A last fleeting expression of a UFO and something associated with space surfaced as last expressions. Now, the researchers went on to conclude that this remote viewer probably didn't see a UFO and was just distracted, but I don't know. UFOs are real and appears remote viewing is real, so. All right, it's all already getting weirder. The next file I wanna share with you has to do with the Devil's Tower. And in fact, there were actually 19 Project Stargate files that had the Devil's Tower included in it. The CIA, DIA, SRI International, the secretive acronym 
group, we'll call them, seem to be obsessed with the Devil's Tower. They did a variety of experiments trying to get remote viewers to guess that target. And for one experiment, they even had the psychic make a Play-Doh model. Does this remind you of anything? Maybe the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind? Spoiler alert, in that film, the plot centers around a man played by actor Richard Dreyfus, who sees a UFO and then has irresistible psychic visions, the Devil's Tower. He even molds it with his mashed potatoes during a meal, and then, and as he goes increasingly crazy throughout the movie, um, he makes it out of mud. Considering that J. Allen Hynek, a scientist and member of Project Blue Book, and the so-called father of ufology consulted on the film and even made a cameo in it, I'm wondering if maybe the CIA was on set too. At the very least, they watched the movie and were inspired by it. There's even another project, Stargate File, that discusses the UFO phenomenon, and the title includes the words, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. All right, so the next five files I want to go through with you all had psychics spying on viewing drum roll outer space one of the targets was russia's phobos pros which were sent to study the moons of mars and the remote viewer even described it as the moon project another target was the viking one lander which was the first spacecraft to land on mars the psychic had this to say about the red planet so here you can see the handwritten impressions that the remote viewer had of the Viking One lander. Of course, they didn't know they were looking um, at Mars. And what's interesting is they actually described seeing a strange structure, like something one would expect to find on the planet Mars. They also referred to AI. They used the initials AI a few times. I don't know what that means. Astral injection, astral intuition, artificial intelligence. Uh, they described it being cold and chilled. The AI term will come up again in this video. I, I definitely want to know what you guys think um, is meant by that. Another target was Titan, a moon of Saturn. And now to get super weird, the CIA, DIA, SRI, the top secret acronym group, had Yuri Geller and Ingo Swan, the star psychics of the program we can presume remote view jupiter and their descriptions were eerily similar and guess what they both found on jupiter water and guess what nasa did eventually find water on jupiter but not until 2011 decades later now this last outer space file they had a psychic remote view mars again but not modern day mars that would be boring ancient Mars. So here's the file titled Mars Exploration, May 22nd, 1984. The sealed envelope was given to the subject immediately prior to the interview. The envelope was not opened until after the interview. In the envelope was a three by five card with the following information. The planet Mars, time of interest approximately 1 million years BC. So I'm just going to read some of the highlights from this remote viewing session. Again, you can read the full transcript. There's a link in the description. I kind of got an oblique view of a pyramid or pyramid form. It's very high. It's kind of sitting in a large depressed area. It's yellowish, uh, okra colored. <laughs> See pyramids, can't tell if it's overlay or not because they're different. They're huge. It's filtered from storms or something. They're like shelters from storms. Yes, they're designed for that. Different chambers, but they're almost stripped of any kind of furnishings or anything. It's like strictly functional place for sleeping, or that's not a good word, hibernations, some form. I can't really get raw inputs, storms, savage storm, and sleeping through storms keep getting Washington Monument overlay. It's like an obelisk. It's like a perception of a shadow of people, very tall, thin. It's only a shadow. It's as if they were there and they're not there anymore. They're ancient people. They're dying. It's past their time or age. They're just looking for a way to survive and they just can't. 
can't seem to get their way out. They can't seem to find their way out. So they're hanging on while they look or wait for something to return or something coming with the answer. Evidently, there was a group or party of them that went to find a new place to live. It's like I'm getting all kinds of overwhelming input of the corruption of their environment. It's failing very rapidly and this group went somewhere like a long way to find another place to live. I think he perceives I'm a hallucination or something. So wow, so if these psychics were so spot on on so many occasions with modern day targets, what does this mean for ancient Mars? Was there a civilization there that had to leave? due to environmental pollution or a natural disaster? Are there still beings on Mars today that were left behind? Kind of sad. And what about these pyramids? I wanna bring up that Buzz Aldrin astronaut actually on the news mentioned a monolith on Mars's moon that needed to be discovered. All right, so you know I saved the weirdest for last. This final file I want to share with you is a little bit disturbing, and honestly, I'm going to need your help interpreting it. So here the experimenters apparently tried to remote view the site of an animal mutilation, most likely cattle mutilation. So let me just read this to you. So the mission, advanced training. The purpose of this session was to allow the viewer to experience a novel AI that term AI again, that associated with the death and mutilation of animals and to understand how such AIs impact upon and possibly limit the degree of conscious site event awareness. 095 required the site event and became acutely aware of the AI's negative influence upon perception objectification of data. And here's the session summary. Site was flat, low, open, dry, warm, rocky, bleak area, like Nevada at night. Associated with the site was the feeling of bad air, contamination, energetics, and radiation. Loud machine noises were, pres were present, as were a group of men who were waiting to do something orchestrated or planned. They started closing in on something, and each man was doing something, lots of excited motion. They were scurrying, preparing, measuring. What they were doing caused strong AIs of queasiness and the feeling that what was going on was very bad. What was induced in the circular marked area is what caused the death. The men came from low, rectangular, fenced buildings near hills. The buildings had more floors than visible with the eye, underground floors. Associated with the building was a strong sense of security, secrecy, hiding, and illegal activities. So what does all this mean? I couldn't find many references to aliens, extraterrestrials, or UFOs in these files, but the term AI comes up a lot. What does that mean? What do you think it stands for? And now cattle mutilations have long been associated with the UFO and alien phenomenon, um, but are humans to blame? And now there's some food for thought. As always, let me know what you think about the Project Stargate files, these in particular, and remote viewing in general. Do you think remote viewing is possible? Do you think the government is still investigating this phenomenon secretly? Or did the government abandon this technique because it just wasn't useful? I mean, it's one thing to remote view a target. It's a whole other thing to use information from that session to make national security decisions or military decisions. All right, guys, that's a wrap of episode five. If you enjoy these videos and you want to watch episode six, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on your notifications.